Prostate cancer is the most commonly diagnosed cancer in men in Australia, but here in Vietnam, where I'm currently recording this video, prostate cancer is the fifth most commonly diagnosed cancer on an annual basis. Hi, my name is Dr. Charles Chabert. I'm a urologist and director of the Prostate Clinic located in the Gold Coast in Australia. In today's video, I wanted to take a slightly different angle and look at the differences, the regional differences between the incidence of prostate cancer both here in Vietnam, where I'm shooting this video, and also in Australia. So as I said, in Australia, it's the most commonly diagnosed solid cancer in men, with approximately 20,000 new cases of uh, cancer being diagnosed on an annual basis. Here in Vietnam, with a population of 100 million, which is around four times the population of the Australian uh, of the Australian population, we actually see that there are around 6,000 new diagnoses of prostate cancer annually. The next question, obviously, is why is there more prostate cancer being diagnosed in Australia when the population is a fraction of what we're seeing here? Well, if we look initially at which cancer in Vietnam is the most common, what we actually see is that liver cancer is the most commonly diagnosed cancer amongst uh, Vietnamese men. That is followed by lung cancer, stomach cancer, colorectal cancer, and the fifth most common cancer in this country is prostate cancer with, as I say, around 6,000 new diagnoses on an annual basis. So why is that? Well, if we look at liver cancer and why men in this country develop liver cancer, really it is because of the endemic, endemic transmission of hepatitis B and hepatitis C. In addition to that, alcohol consumption in Southeast Asia is highest here in Vietnam. So really, it's a combination of two factors, both the increased risk of a chronic liver infection in combination with environmental factors. Now, as many of you will be aware, the way that we diagnose prostate cancer really is with a PSA test. And I'm sure many of you will pass some comments in the section down below about the inaccuracies of a PSA test and the potential for false positives and false negatives, and I accept all of those things. That being said, though, still a PSA test is the best way that we can begin the process of determining if someone has a significant prostate cancer or not with all of its flaws intact. And certainly in Australia, although there is still no established screening program for prostate cancer, uh, the use of the test is widespread. And really, it's the utility of this test which leads to earlier diagnoses. Here in Vietnam, yes, certainly a PSA test is available, but the use of the test is far less common. Another factor that will certainly play a role here is that uh, the longevity of men in this country is shorter than in those men in Australia. And to give you an idea, in Australia, median survival for an Australian man is to around the age of 82. Here in this country, the median survival is out to 72. So Australian men on average have an additional decade of life that men here don't have. And one of the risk factors for developing prostate cancer is age. It becomes far more common as men progress through life. Uh, and therefore, if obviously, if men are short a decade of life, they're less likely to be diagnosed. So... How do we establish a diagnosis of prostate cancer? Well, as indicated, we start with a PSA test. Historically, men would end up with a biopsy, an invasive biopsy, if we were concerned with regards to the PSA level. As many of you know, really the next step is an MRI scan, a 3T MRI scan to assess someone's risk. And certainly that technology is, is definitely available here, certainly in uh, Ho Chi Minh City, where I'm recording this video. So men will have an MRI scan if we're concerned about the PSA values. And if there is an index lesion, we will then proceed on to doing a targeted biopsy. If men have no abnormality on their MRI scan, they do not require a biopsy and can be surveyed with time and an additional PSA. 
if the PSA increases with uh, in the context of a normal MRI, the next step really is a PSMA PET scan to make sure that someone is not a false negative on their MRI. If you have comments, if you have questions, if you'd like to share your story, please leave it in the comments section down below. As always, like the video, subscribe if you got benefit. And if you'd like to know more about prostate cancer, have a look at this video here or this video up here. Until the next time, take care of your prostate.